All right, so we are getting ready to start Unit 7. And Unit 7 is all about differential equations. And so today is kind of an introductory lesson to differential equations. So a differential equation is any equation that contains a derivative expression. <clears throat> All right. And so the notation that it, uh, we use here is um, most of the time Leibniz form, which is dy over dx <clears throat> for the first um, derivative and then for our second derivatives it's d2y over dx2. Right. So differential equations may contain the original function and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Or just be written in terms of the independent variable only. Okay, and most of these that we're going to write are going to be the second case where they're written in terms of the independent variable only. There are some that we're going to verify <clears throat> that are like number five, where you have a second derivative plus the original function that's containing the original function. All right, and then this one right here, number four, that is one where it, the, it only contains the independent variable, which in this case would be B, the birth rate of the bird. All right, so those are the two types of differential equations that we can see. All right, and if the rate is proportional or directly proportional to a current quantity, then you're going to write it uh, like this, where D, <clears throat> not writing, dy over dx is equal to k times times y. So you multiply for direct or for proportional. k is the constant of proportionality. And then if the rate is inversely proportional to the current quantity, you're going to divide. So it's dy over dx equals k divided by y. All right, and that's a little review from pre-calculus. Okay, so we're going to need to understand that proportionality to do these three. So for number one, the number of fruit flies increases at a rate proportional to its current population, which is F. Write a differential equation to represent the situation. So a differential equation means that we're going to have something like this, dy over dx. But we have to use the variables that... Um, they're, we're given in the problem, so we're given f, so df, and then it's going to change with respect to time. So the fruit flies increase over time, so um, we would have dt on the bottom. All right, and then that's always equal to k. And then for proportional, we're going to multiply by the f which is what we have here. And then for inversely proportional, we would divide by the F. So we are just going to multiply here. And the second part is, would K be positive or negative? So for a rate that increases, because this gives us, differential equations give us a rate of change. So if that rate increases, then K is going to be positive. All right, for A, a scientist is studying the relationship of two quantities, S and T, in an experiment. The scientist finds that under certain conditions, as the quantity S increases, the quantity T decreases. After taking measurements, the scientist determines that the rate of change of quantity S with respect to the quantity T is inversely proportional to the natural log of the quantity of t. 
So we are going to write a differential equation that could describe this relationship. Okay, so this one is going to be a little more complicated, I think. So the rate of change, rate of change of the quantity of S with respect to the quantity of T. So that means dS over dt. Okay, the other one was with respect to time. This one is re with respect to the quantity of t. All right, we definitely need a k. All right, the rest of that says inversely proportional to the natural log of the quantity of t. So because it's inversely proportional, we're going to divide by the natural log of the quantity of t. All right, so that one had a lot of information we had to sort through. All right, and then three, a jogger runs along a straight track. The jogger's position is given by the function s of t, where t is measured in minutes since the start of the run. During the first minute of the run, the jogger's acceleration is proportional to the square root of the time since the start of the run. All right, we're gonna write a differential equation that could describe this relationship. So we're looking at, we have this function s, which is the position function. So we have to remember the relationship between the position and the acceleration. Do you guys remember that? So acceleration is the second derivative of position. So the first derivative of position is velocity. The second derivative is acceleration. So if we are talking about acceleration and our function is s, it's going to be the second derivative. Okay, so it's, we, got, we, we do need to equal k, right? And then this is proportional to the square root of the time. So because it's proportional, we're going to multiply by the square root of the time. Okay, the next one, we are going to be given the differential equation. Oh, we're going to use it to answer questions. So the weight of a baby bird at birth is 20 grams. If Bt is the weight of the bird in grams t days after it is first weighed, then dv over dt is one-fifth times 100 minus b. All right, and that gives us the rate at which the bird is growing with respect to time or the rate at which the weight is changing with respect to time. So for A, at what rate is the bird's weight changing when it weighs 20 grams? Now, 20 grams is actually what B is. All right, so that's going to be 1 fifth times 100 minus that B. So dv dt is one fifth times seventy, or fourteen. And then we have we're going to give the unit. So there's grams, and this is the rate of change, and time is in days. So at thirty day, no, 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 no. at thirty grams, this bird is growing at 14 grams per day. And then let's see how fast the bird is growing when it weighs 90 grams. All right, so at 90 grams, the bird is growing at 
two grams per day. It's way slower than that 30 grams. Okay, so what can you say about the rate of change of the vertebrae as it gets closer to its adult weight, which is 100 grams? So the rate of change of B of T slows down as it nears the adult weight. So basically, it's going to grow fastest when it's the farthest away from its adult rate, right? when this is the largest number. So that's when it's, you know, the, the, the less the bird weighs, the faster it's growing. All right, so we're going to explain why the graph shown cannot be the graph of B of T. So this one definitely slows down as you get to the, the birth, uh, the adult weight, which is true. But the problem is we just said that the, the um, bird grows fastest when it weighs the least. So that should be the steepest slope. So it should look more like that, more like kind of like a logarithm graph. All right, so um, the rate of change for the slope should be fastest or steepest when B equals 20 and then decrease as the bird gains weight. All right, and then I just realized I told you wrong at the beginning. This one does, B is the original function. So this one that uses the original function. Three is one of those that just uses the independent variable time. All right, and then this one uses the original function, and that one does also. Sorry. All right, and then number five, which of the following functions are solutions to the differential equation uh, y double prime plus y equals zero? All right, and we're going to choose all that apply, so there can be more than one. And so to me, the only way to figure this out is to actually find what the second derivative is of those functions and then add them together and see which one uses the, it gives you zero. And to find the second derivative, you have to find the first derivative first. <laughs> so on A, if I find the first derivative of e to the x, it is e to the x. And then the second derivative is also e to the x. So then if I take the second derivative, and I add the original function to it, it does not give you zero, so it's not A. So that's basically what you have to go through on all of these. Okay, so then on B, I have to use the chain rule. So um, the derivative of e to the negative x is still e to the negative x, but we have to multiply by the derivative of negative x, so that's negative one. All right, and then this one, the um, the derivative of e to the negative e to the negative x um, is still going to be e to the negative x, but then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of negative x, which is going to be negative 1, so you get negative, negative, so that will just be positive. 
So then if I go <clears throat> to add the second derivative of the original function, still not equal to zero. Don't worry, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> All right, so for C, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. All right, and then the derivative of that is negative sine of x. Uh-oh, here we go. So we take the second derivative, and we add the original function to it, and we do get zero. So there's one answer. Okay, so let's try this one. So if I want to find the derivative of the negative cosine of x, that's going to be sine of x. That second derivative is going to be cosine of x. So we take our second derivative and we add our original function to it and we do get zero. Okay, this one we're going to need to do the chain rule. So it's going to be 3 cosine of 3x. All right, and then we'll do the chain rule again. So it's going to be negative 9 cosine of 3x. So obviously this one's not going to work. Oh, sorry, that should have been sine. Sorry, negative 9 sine of 3x. Okay, so we do second derivative plus original. It's not going to happen. Okay, so this is going to be negative 3 sine of x. Negative 3 cosine of x. This one has, looks like it's going to be good. So three of those ended up working for that differential equation. All right, so your assignment today is to complete the worksheet.